from these include the Peakside Diner, Food Inn, Cold Hills Greenhouses, and Shannon Farms. And uh, congratulations to the those who are nominated also to show that we have uh, thriving businesses going on in Augusta. And you know, coming along. I know that Cold Hills Greenhouses have been expanding over the years, and it's good to see that. Uh, in terms of new business of the year, the winner was Flowers of the Field, and the uh, award was given to Brenda Hitler. Other nominations include, uh, included uh, Harper's Landing, JJ's Construction. Um, I want to thank uh, MP Michael Barrett for uh, participating in person at the ceremony, and MPP Steve Clark, who uh, participated virtually. So anyway, uh, a very good event, and I'm glad to see that we are able to recognize all the businesses. I'm going to move to C, which is approved the agenda, and for now I have a motion. It is moved by Deputy Mayor Chamber, seconded by Councilor Henry. Be it resolved that the agenda for November, November 9th, 2020, be adopted. Any member of Council have anything to be allowed to add it or any comment to the agenda? I'm seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? None. Carried. Leads us to approval of the minutes of the previous meetings, and for that, I have a motion moved by Councillor Henry, seconded by Deputy Mayor Shaver. It reads, be it resolved that Council approve the minutes of the October 26, 2020 Council meeting as distributed to all members. Uh, members, you've had a chance to look at the minutes. Is there any errors or omissions that you would like to have corrected before you call? And seeing none, I'm going to call a question. All in favor of the motion? The opposition, so the motion is carried. Moving right along, we're on to E, which is disclosure of interest in nature thereof. We have the agenda. Does anybody have an interest that needs to be disclosed? And if so, provide the nature. I'm seeing none. I'm moving from F, business arising from the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, does anybody have anything that they wish to raise? I have any questions or comments? All right. That brings us to G, which is delegations and presentations. And uh, as I mentioned in my opening remark, we have had a brief law from the Employment and Education Center. Welcome to it. We had a telephone conversation, I think, really about six weeks ago. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was hoping we'd have an announcement sometime. But <laughs> now that we're still working on it, I know we're still working on it. So that's uh, very pleased to hear that. Uh, but you're here, so I'm going to offer the G. Um, make your presentation either from where you sit or if you want the lecture and the church. Sure, I can go ahead. Just right here. So thank you very much for having me this evening. I just wanted to come by um, this evening to inform everyone about the latest program that we're running out of the Employment and Education Center. So the latest program is called We Are the Change. And this program is an employment program that is working with vulnerable youth. Um, so what this program will do is fill a gap and offer youth the ability and the opportunity to gain employment skills before going out and looking for employment. Uh, it's a 30 week program that offers full support to youth. Uh, it's just myself who's running the program. We will be running 30 youth through the program over the course of two years. We've already started our first session of the program with 10 youth. Um, so what we do is we go through our first four weeks. So that first four weeks is really going through their pre-employment pre skills, life skills, and any, um, any trainings that they would require going out to work in the trades. So for instance, we've done uh, fall arrest, working at heights, uh, confined spaces, WMIS, They've had the full certified soft skills training, so they know how to be and what employer expectations are when they go into the workplace. And then they get to put all of that into practice while we're building a tiny home. So what we're doing is building a tiny home in a warehouse. They'll be learning electrical. They will be learning carpentry, plumbing, heating and cooling. Uh, they'll be learning roofing, everything you can possibly imagine that takes place in building a home, they will be exposed to. This will then give them the opportunity to go into a work placement. It will be a quality employment placement, which will last 12 weeks. The quality employment placement, uh, we will be looking for employers that will be willing to take part in that placement uh, with us. 
what we're looking for is employers that are willing to take on graduates of the program for the 12 week placement. Uh, like I said, the extensive training that they'll be receiving when going on to placement will put them one step ahead uh, than if they were just hiring someone perhaps off the street. After their uh, employment placement, they're then considered finished with the program. We are hoping that we can find placements that have the option of keeping our, our youth employed uh, indefinitely in those job placements. Once we finish that first cycle, I'll go through the cycle again two more times. Uh, so that we are seeing a full group of 30. Um, the tiny homes, we're still working on where those tiny homes will be placed. We have partnered with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so they will be, we will be donating the tiny homes to Habitat for Humanity so that they can then be going through the process that they typically go through uh, when working with those who are looking to buy a Habitat home. Um, so yeah, so really that's in a nutshell, that's our program. It has been phenomenal so far to see how far people have come just in a short period of time. We're going into our eighth week of the program, so we're not even halfway through. And I can already attest to the difference that I've seen in the youth from when they first started up until this point. Uh, they've really bonded. They have are exemplary with their teamwork. I've actually had some of them ask if they can do their placements together uh, just because they have formed such a great team working together. So something that we were thinking about with Augusta and all other municipalities is one, we'd love to see people perhaps uh, placed uh, and looking for those job placements within the township. We've also spoken about uh, tiny homes possibly coming into um, Augusta as well, and also mentorship. So that's a really big piece. And ironically, before I took on the role of project coordinator, we are the change. I was the mentorship coordinator. So mentorship is near and dear to my heart. And we're always looking for people to mentor the youth as well so that they have someone that they can really uh, call up and ask those questions that maybe we aren't comfortable asking our employers. Um, and that would that pretty well covers it. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for members of council on this? What's the average age of the youth that you work with? It's a great question. So our youth is very different. Our youth is ranges from, for this program, is age 15 to 30. 15 to 30, that's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Are you able to just speak briefly? Now you're saying that uh, acquiring a property for the King County House in Augusta is via the Habitat Group. Um, are you aware of progress here? Because I don't know if we have online Mr. Belay, uh, uh, Mr. Morrison. Did we have him? Did he give a comment or just provide counsel with an update of where we are with that? I know we had spoken briefly. Uh, Myron and I had spoken. Uh, the original property that he had put forward as an option sold, and so then it was looking at uh, other options. Uh, he had given me an address. I don't know off the top of my head what the address was, um, and the possibility of even building like a tiny village, which we would love, but unfortunately our funding only covers the build of three tiny yeah. homes. Yeah. Well, the council is very supportive of um, working with uh, Habitat for Humanity. And your program adds an extra bonus. So, um, where, as I said in my introduction, I'm kind of looking for a new story that we can that we can break here of a partnership with the three. So, I uh, just a point of curiosity: when I attended the um, economic summit that the county put on last November, um, there was uh, a lady who uh, made a presentation with regard to training uh, by audiovisual or um, uh, I'm thinking the right term, where people wear the glasses and, and they actually physically look, uh, it was very, very promising. Are you using that? We are. You are using Yes. So that's our Career Labs virtual reality. Yes. Yes. And so the virtual reality, uh, it, it is perfect for the youth in this project because uh, the first four sessions that we brought out yes. were all within the trades. So we have actually used it not once but twice. Um, making sure that the youth get to go through that to experience it as well. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear that because uh, I was at the table with uh, Mr. Moss in uh, 401, and uh, he's on the committee that uh, helps produce those or at least um, uh, promotes them. And I asked him, do they really work? And he said, oh, yeah, they're really great. 
It's an it's incredible. Um, we actually just switched over to an Oculus system with our Career Labs VR, so it's much more it's user friendly. And once you have those goggles on, there's really you're completely submerged in the experience. And it's kind of great to uh, around for that. And, uh, something that Gus is very much interested in because uh, in our discussions with people as to what we can do to encourage economic development here. The question keeps coming up of uh, shortages of uh, training staff. And so um, the program that Mr. Moss was talking about um, was very well suited to electrical plumbing. Uh, but if you get into that and do levels like, uh, and I, maybe they exist, but um, machine, machining and uh, other things that require equipment, it'd be good to have those things going because it's definitely a shortage, uh, as far as I understand, of blue, blue, blue collar workers. Absolutely. They think that very good income. Some machinists uh, in the model when I was there would be highly paid, let's put it that way. Very yeah. fine detail work they were doing and very much in demand. Anyway, thank you for dropping by and uh, providing this council with an update on the program. Yeah. Did you have something? Go ahead. There's the man. Uh, Mr. Thake would like to add a couple of well, comments to this. True, his worship. So, uh, Heather, I, I've been, I came to meet you a little while ago. I encouraged her to come speak to council, uh, your worship and council. Um, I, speaking of mentorship, if I may, so your CBO and myself, the director of public works, went there to discuss municipal laws and mentorship and just that, worship. So, when she says mentorship, <clears throat> when I went there, those kids were just, glued to us. It was, it was such an amazing experience from a personal level, but also I put myself a little bit in their shoes from my past. So I really encourage council to really, um, I think Councillor Henry was involved now. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for the, the patience and the, and the hard work. Um, one of our local residents, Mr. Doug Brooks, has uh, worked with Heather and, and they're currently, Doug's been, been a big effort and a help for these guys. I just think this is going to expand, Mayor and uh, Council. If we can just help these kids not become statistics, but part of the culture in the world, I, I commend Heather and, and everybody involved. So, thanks. Well, when we say here that economic development is a, a priority, it comes from the fact that one of the things that does it does helps keep our youth here, right? So they either graduating from high school or some programs. So it's absolutely essential if we want to see. Uh, to remain uh, sustainable and uh, prosperous from the point of view of having a decent salary to have a, you know, a good quality life for you both yourself and your family. It's absolutely critical, so we're very supportive of that. And, uh, anyway, you know, hope to have a chat on something specific. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, uh, we're then moving on to uh, eight, which is correspondence petitions, and uh, uh, not something that comes up a lot, but we do have one. We also have a uh, resolution in our package. Uh, the motion is moved by Councilor Schubert, seconded by Councilor Henry. The motion reads, it is all this council support the resolution of the city of Belleville petitioning the provincial government to consider providing funding uh, funding support and training resources to municipalities to meet the AODA compliance standard and that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Premier Board and MPC Clark and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Does the Council, does anybody have any points of questions or discussion? Uh, before I uh, invite the question, I'm going to ask Mr. Morrison to comment. Uh, on um, a couple of the provisions in the motion that was adopted by Bellevue and um, at the in, in our page, uh, our, our number in page two of their document, it reads, whereas the Disability for Ontario with the Disability Act contemplates the need to consider technical or economic considerations in the implementation of accessibility standards. Um, and then later on, it says, either therefore resolved that the Corporation of the City of Belleville requests that the province of Ontario consider providing funding support and training resources to municipalities to meet these compliance standards. Mr. Morrison, has anything changed since the time of COVID 
uh, where this would be raised as being a higher challenge that the municipality has to meet. And I guess I'll just throw in there while you uh, are going to answer. The municipalities have been provided uh, almost, I think, three, correct me if I'm mistaken, like, three different grants to assist us in the time to put in, whether it's modernization uh, or uh, strengthening our position. Um, I'm just trying to get the genesis of this request. Why is it there? What What is the need that was not there before COVID? Can you help me at all? Um, through your worship, uh, has anything changed that would increase the intensity of this? Not to my knowledge. So this uh, concern about your technical ability to meet these standards existed before. It existed the same, no change. But for our uh, website in particular, uh, for an example, um, certain pictures and other things that are posted on there can't be read uh, by certain people, so they're not accessible, technically accessible. So basically, we could require um, a significant rewrite of websites. Um, and I think that's where they're going here. For someone who has a, a bigger area, the city of Belleville, for example, let's say the website is 10 times as uh, complicated and, and costly as ours, could be a, a significant expense. And so they're asking for that out of the out of a separate pocket, a separate request that's forcing this. It's not the uh, COVID or anything like that. Modernize, it would be eligible for the modernization funding. Yeah. But uh, I, I think they're going to ask for it on top of that because a place like Belleville would have already spent all their modernization funding, spent their COVID funding, and still be coming up short yeah. on this. I will just ask um, Annette, are you still uh, there? I am. Did you want to add anything to that discussion? No, I just think it's um, something that's always been there and it's just coming down to crunch time. Um, it's it's more than just making the website accessible. We can sort of kind of do that easily enough at, like as a broader thing, but it's keeping it accessible. And every time we get a document, we have to check that that's accessible before we put it up on the website. Because the minute you put a document on the website that's not accessible, your website's not accessible anymore. So it's uh, more than just... And uh, just uh, look for counsel, uh, your view on this, but I, I tell you that it concerns me the amount of money that COVID is uh, causing our government to spend for very important work of uh, taking care of financially of those who have lost their jobs uh, or their hours are curtailed or what. And so going into debt becomes a little bit further into, uh, into debt at all levels of government, debt, provincial and uh, municipal where it happens, um, is, is understandable up to a point. But um, I'm starting to go in the other direction now in the sense of having considerable concern about it. There will always be talked about our debt was causing, um, was going to be, have to be paid by our grandchildren. And now with COVID, I think we're down to grandchildren and grandchildren and grandchildren. Um, so a purpose of this kind of a resolution is to get support from other municipalities to support Belleville's approach. And so uh, I'm just just positioning the two. I can understand what Belleville needs, but is it something that this council would say, yes, we support if we're not in a position of needing it ourselves, I, mean, I don't want to just run at getting the government to spend more money for the sake of um, uh, some dollars. Anyway, I, I hope council will give us a little direction. You will in your vote, that's for sure. Um, but anybody wish to comment before I call the question? All right, we'll find out. All in favor of this motion? All right. I think it's an important thing that the municipalities put these motions out for support from others. And uh, I think we all take it seriously. But uh, there are going to be some other um, ones. I can't think of any. Uh, 
Anyway, we're going to move on to um, moving to the committee of the whole. And for that, I have a motion. It is moved by Councilor Henry, seconded by Deputy Mayor Shaver. Be resolved as council resolved and second. This will be the whole meeting. Any discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? There's none. So the motion is carried. That moves us to J, which is committee and staff reports in terms of. United uh, County Division Grenville. There were two meetings since the council last met. It was Tuesday, November 3rd, was Committee of the Whole, and Wednesday, November 4th, uh, Joint Services Committee. There was nothing uh, that uh, was uh, significant enough as far as I'm concerned to bring to your attention. Uh, I had mentioned to you that the agenda uh, and the briefing documents are on the uh, website of counties, and so if you have an interest, I encourage you to look at them. Uh, I know that I'm uh, kind of making a call on things, uh, but I just don't want to take up too much time unless there's something that really strikes us saying this has a significant impact on Augusta Township. Um, on Wednesday, November 5th, we had um, an Agricultural Review Advisory Committee report. Uh, it talked uh, much about uh, what we had at World Energy Day or at uh, looking for the uh, points of view uh, of uh, Members of the of the committee. Unfortunately, we um, only had two, and so um, the feedback was limited. But at the same time, it's high quality. And that we have two people who are very interested and committed to that committee. We hope to grow it and attract uh, more more uh, mm -hmm. uh, more members, and uh, especially uh, of the uh, of the uh, farming. Uh, mm -hmm. I think associations. But anyway, uh, Councillor Chapel Holman, whenever you are able to uh, take over that chairship back, I'm happy I am. Thank you. you are. Yep. And we should really look at uh, how we're going to increase um, numbers on the committee. Yes. Because it's, um, it's uh, I think it has a high potential for a lot of good work. I, I think you've got to get the word out because I don't think people completely understand what it is. At any rate, you and I can. We can talk. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the health board, um, I have nothing to report. There was a finance committee last meeting last Thursday, which takes a look at the budget, um, and uh, it will be discussed at the upcoming um, meeting on October the 19th. And um, so I think I'll end it there. In terms of, yeah, that's all I have. So I'm going to go to recreation and by the board and <coughs> Mr. Bowman, do you have anything to report? Thank you for your worship. Uh, not really, just recreation. I have a Zoom meeting tomorrow night for Merck, and then library is November 17th. Um, Nicole's report pretty much has <clears throat> lots of activities going on, lots that has gone on, even though with COVID and stuff like that, she's made great strides. Um, I went to the farmer's market again this week, uh, new vendors, and uh, I think she said when I talked to her yesterday, they had 115. People through the uh, market on uh, Saturday. So if you get the opportunity, come on up. Lots of home bacon. Yeah. Okay. Is that anything? Okay. And does anybody have any questions? Um, I have I have a couple comments, but I don't think you're short tonight. Yeah. It's all more. Yeah. 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 So I'll move to the economic committee. We did have a meeting. Yeah, we had a meeting. It was mostly focused on the business of the year. And then you said most of it in your remarks. So, okay, sorry. Other than that, I really don't have any report. Very <laughs> good. Yeah, I've always thought very thoughtful when you're yeah. up in a room and you're third to speak or fourth, you almost can get up and say ditto yeah. for a lot of it, and you're looking for something new. And anyway, thank you though for that report. Um, I think I've already reported on the uh, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee, so I'll turn to the uh, CDC, or it's just Community Development. And, uh, and uh, your worship. Uh, we had our meet, second meeting on October 28th. Um, some of the discussion was Volunteer Appreciation Day, which is December the 5th. 
and we're looking at combining it with the farmer's market at Burke Hall and having some food vendors. As you see, there's a motion in the agenda for tonight. Um, we're also, there's a motion to accept Michelle Andrews and she's the executive director for Maitland Tower. I think she'd be a real asset to the committee that wants to offer. Um, another discussion was the ambassador program and not only would we um, encourage new businesses and we get to meet them, but maybe new residents as well. Um, a couple of things we threw around was possibly a park uh, Christmas parade. We don't know if that would work, but that was just some of the discussion. And possibly having communities decorate for Christmas and have voting residents who see if we can get them more involved. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I said I would just leave my comments for the, uh, when we get to the report from the recreation group. But one of the things on the development group that stated there, and they said we had our second CDC meeting, I think I think yours was the third, but I'm not sure the numbers, but what's important is that the group is very passionate about inclusion, diversity, and multiculturalism. Um, and with the addition of uh, Michelle, the council approved this motion uh, that I have, then um, this is a, a woman who is very much involved in all those things, including climate change. And uh, so that adds another uh, facet to the work of the So your committee is really the reason the point. Going on until seven. There's the one out there with the. Um, getting the South Grenville Municipal Drug Strategy Group going again. I mentioned at the last meeting that I spoke with uh, Mayor Todd and Mayor Sayo, and they're uh, very much interested in it. And so um, that may well be enough to do your um, activity. So we have yet to discuss that. So I don't want to talk about the topic. Uh, I had mentioned to you that the community would be involved. It's flashing the bond. So uh, I'm going to move then. Um, I guess we can do that now because uh, we're going to. Uh, so we have a motion with regard to the uh, new uh, member of the community uh, development committee. It is moved by Deputy Mayor Schieber, seconded by Councillor Henry. Be it resolved that Council appoint Michelle Andrews to the Community Development Committee. Is there any discussion on this? I'll call the question all in favor. If you all motions carry. Again, we've got to know Michelle from her work at the uh, and uh, she's very much um, a community person and a huge asset for us. I can, I can assure everyone of that. Uh, Mr. Morrison, we have admin and finance issues, and uh, do you have anything before we go to the formal report? Uh, through your worship, I'll just uh, speak to a few. Uh, the government's uh, different funding opportunities are coming in from numerous different angles recently. So there's a new $100,000 resilience uh, fund that we were notified of last week. We'll be looking into the best fit for that. We have a number of ideas and we're just working on which one it fits best for. But, um, so stay tuned on that and we'll bring back uh, recommendations to Council. Today we received a, another announcement from the Seniors Ministry in charge of uh, Seniors Affairs. It'd be a $60,000 grant to encourage uh, accessibility and activation for seniors within our municipality. Again, much across the board, all municipalities would be getting a lump sum like that. We're working on that and it looks like they'll be very compatible. The huge uh, opportunity that was announced in the provincial budget related to EORN and um, um, internet. Yeah broadband capacity across the province. So again, that um, EORN set a notice out today. I'll be forward, forwarding 
that notice plus uh, related commentary from the various municipal associations on just what that means. But one thing we're looking at is if EORN takes care of the backbone, the highway, uh, we're working with other profit companies like Coca-Cola and Bell and those to take care of getting it from the highway to your house. Um, the resiliency funding might take care of it in the house. So that this room, for example, we might recommend that all our facilities be brought up to grade so that you could handle very high speeds within the building efficiently. So if anybody attended uh, Merck the other day, we had some trouble with the uh, um, uh, MPP uh, clerk, and so it would avoid difficulties like that. And then this new $60,000 activation award might help us uh, put applications on those services. So they're all coming together at the same time now, and they may all fit very well together for a big puzzle and would vastly improve uh, information technology for all ages within Augusta. So uh, stay tuned, that's still uh, coming together and we'll bring you more information very soon. Um, Annette wanted me to note that uh, Roma, will be on this year again rural ontario municipal association as will uh, ogre a month later they'll both be virtual still at this point so we will probably be we have registered for one year and i'll be putting it here like a drive-in if uh, anybody can and wishes to attend both of those as well, the United Counties Economic Development Forum on November 20th. I think Annette has sent this notice out to everybody. It'll be run virtually as well. We'll be putting it up here if anybody can and wishes to attend. That was November 20th. That was said. November 20th, okay. yes. Uh, Adam Kirk or Annette, did you have anything else you wanted to announce in this? Part. Uh, just I thought if we had a chance. Um, well, first the Rome on the Roma. If is everybody comfortable coming into the office, or were there people that wanted to be registered to watch it at their home? We just have to know that ahead of time, I guess. Yeah. Um, then the training availability. Um, we had mentioned we wanted to do some training with the counselors. I was just looking for everybody's availability. Do you want me to do that by email or do we? I, see. I don't know if you can see with the distance of that, but nodding of heads around the table. So if we can follow that up by a specific email. Okay. Okay. No, what? Okay. Can you elaborate on that? that? Uh, sure, or would Doug prefer, or do you want me to, um, I've got, uh, somebody in mind, but I am looking at other options as well, but I just wanted to know, um, what availability was ahead of time, so as I'm talking to people, we can narrow that down sooner than later, with Christmas coming on to us like a freight train, um, but yeah, it's just, um, some procedural training for the chairs of the committees to help them out when they're chairing their committees. Can, can you repeat that, Annette? I think two were talking at the same time and they didn't hear you. Okay, yeah, it's just some training with um, somebody from that knows procedural bylaws or procedural procedures very well um, to come in and help counsel with their uh, chairing of their meetings. So after two years, essentially, I'm always looking out for opportunities, uh, and I hope that you identify them to me uh, when you have any of your own. Uh, but it struck me that now everyone has around two years under their belt of uh, getting to practice and experience in, in uh, chairing meetings, uh, that it might be beneficial to have someone come in and just review uh, strengths, uh, a good chair, and uh, pitfalls that should be avoided. 
And uh, my discussion with uh, Mr. Morrison was to offer this also to staff from the point of view of development, because staff from time to time will uh, find themselves in the in a chair position or something that approximates very much a chair position. So this will uh, help them to be able to um, uh, hold their meetings or, or whatever the event or circumstances is um, with, uh, with, with a better knowledge base. And so um, we had at the uh, Agriculture and Rural Advisory Committee, uh, where it was made mention of that, and uh, our committee members asked if they also could have that. And so um, I have yet to discuss that with uh, Mr. Morrison or with our clerk. But again, uh, I mentioned it as a development kind of training for staff, which just means it enhances their toolbox of skills and abilities, which is always uh, important to keep uh, staff committed and, uh, and, and active on the behalf of the team training and moving on. And uh, given the uh, benefit that our committee members, our committee bring to us, uh, it strikes me, and I don't have a, a final discussion with uh, Mr. Morrison, but it's something that uh, I will be raising with him because if there is enough interest from the uh, from the community members, then I'm going to be asking for it to come to Again, it's almost like public speaking. It's just one of those things in the toolbox that you learn as you're going, and then uh, having uh, some uh, development training that helps sharpen it, just uh, helps you develop those skills to be strong. That's uh, essentially what uh, the well, she's going to be looking for dates which will be available on, and, uh, and we've uh, agreed that she'll do that by email. Okay, I'm going to Is there any other topics? Uh, uh, not in that. I just want to take the opportunity to uh, wish your clerk, Annette, a happy 29th anniversary. That's oh, why yeah, she's yeah. At, uh, joining us from home tonight. Uh, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And it looks like we're uh, going to uh, put something uh, to the clerk, something permanent in our uh, committee staff reports. And uh, when the uh, Operations Review Committee uh, was uh, the standard, and part of the reason is because we have the public works manager present at meetings at all times who's able to cover off uh, all of what's gone on since the last meeting. Uh, we need a regular spot put in the agenda for him. So I'm going to do it now with the permission of, uh, of council here uh, and call on the state to provide us with a report. <coughs> Sorry, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. Good uh, oh, wait. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, I, somebody was somebody was shuffling papers. That's all I could hear. I wasn't sure. What are you adding to the agenda? The report from Public Works Manager. Every meeting. Oh. oh, so you're adding a report? Yes. And that in the committee staff report section, if we could add uh, Public Works in in the area of the admin and fire department. Oh, okay. Yep. To your worship, uh, good evening, Council. Uh, Council Scavell Holman, uh, it's great to see you back. Thank you. Uh, to your worship, so I just wanted to update Council. I didn't put a, uh, an activity report. I tend to tend to like to give it to uh, you guys at the end of a month. So what we've done. So this was just going to be more of a verbal update, and I'm obviously here for any comments, concerns, or questions. Uh, first and foremost, your worship. Uh, we started to team up with Prescott on a few projects. We're helping them with some road maintenance as they look at us as experts. Kudos to them. I don't know what I've done, but I owe them a coffee, I think, for saying that. Um, we've also pulled off their camera to start doing our storm sewers or our drains that catch water from our catch basements, which historically has never been done in Augusta. And I don't even think through my CAO, we even know what we have for storm sewers in Augusta. So we're starting to track that with a program called MESH, uh, the report next. Uh, next uh, council meeting to uh, to bring up the date on, on that MESH program. Uh, the whole point is I'm, I'm bringing up uh, working 
collaboratively, collaboratively with Prescott. Uh, we're starting to kind of get some concerns and some um, uh, through our speed radar program, which is established every week on a new location, a new road uh, for whatever reason. Generally, it's traffic counts to speeding concerns to uh, road maintenance uh, issues we have ongoing. Um, we're going to lower Merwin Lane next week uh, on the north end to 60 kilometers an hour. Um, alternatively, there will be a, a bylaw come forward soon to council as it has to be a bylaw first. Um, under the road authority, we can we can lower speed limits or, or try to lower speed limits and see how it works. Um, this has been brought forward from concerned residents and and attributed to speeding accordingly. So I'll, I'll come back to council with maybe how it went, what we're seeing. Uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up so you're not, if you get the phone calls, please pass them along to me or at least you have a heads up. Main Street, uh, Main Street, North Augusta. We got it paid, folks. Um, Mother Nature was on my side this year. So I'm happy to report council. It's been paved. It's been really widened. I encourage my council to go up and see. Um, the residents are thankful and uh, really just overwhelmed with uh, the drainage we fixed last year. We followed up with the paving as promised this year. So, Council, again, thank you on behalf of the residents and Public Works for your support. We're road tomorrow. So, we're road. We're doing a special type of project. Um, it's it's the first of its kind in Ontario with a product called Mastic, M-A-S-T-I-C. Uh, Mastic is a new, fairly new technology that crosses a tar tar that you put in crack ceiling cross between a cold mix which is a granular type substance we fill potholes with they come up with this chemical mixture that actually combines both um, the reason it's the first of its kind in Ontario actually I think in North America is we haven't tried it in this application and I invited the company down to try it MTO just approved it on the 417 so us little Augusta folks are going to do something probably the first in North America I'll follow the council let you know how it goes it's a type of patching technique we use instead of coal patch. It's going to be a type of patching technique that probably we're hoping will last longer. Um, the company's a little nervous because it's not supposed to be used. They don't think it's going to maybe be the best fit. I said, ah, you know what? I think it's going to work and I'll, I'll go with the limb. I'll follow up with the council. Uh, Merrill Lane will be closed tomorrow for a major cross culvert installation that we will be doing in house. We generally uh, in the past, I think have subbed them out. Um, we've brought that construction back in house, so we should save a lot of money and have it done in a day. Uh, 18 meters long, which is quite a quite a big culvert, uh, and around uh, around three feet in uh, in diameter. Um, speed radars, again, we, we put them in every week. They go back to the police service board. I think your worship is familiar with these. I know CAO is. Um, they are starting to trigger a lot of good stuff and a lot of responses from us, proactive measures, and I'll bring. A report, a fairly intensive report on what I would like to offer council on some solution in our urban areas and uh, specifically Maitland. Um, and I look forward to talking to you about that. Uh, winter contract was put out. Um, there's been some uh, there's been some insurance hikes and some liability issues surrounding private insurance. We got one back. Um, the contract was was not full, so. Um, I can assure you our new truck is going to get fitted with a plow and standard uh, this week and will be fully operational to do anything in house. So I can assure council before winter comes, we are in good hands. We're prepared and I don't foresee any issues regarding the contracts that we generally put out before. So I'm looking forward to bringing that back with a report to where we are, where we've been, how much money we saved. Um, Main of transportation, just a quick update. Uh, a couple of things have been brought to my attention regarding the lines there. Um, we put the lines there when we first painted them just for more of a control aspect issue to keep everybody in line, if you want to say. Um, I did take a look at it today. Uh, you'll probably see me paint, remove some of the white line, and maybe either put six big parking spaces in there because that's what we, we generally want, or leave it all black with just the dividing line between the parking and uh, the, the place you walk. So no big deal. Um, I just wanted to keep council up to date. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions, comments? Um, a couple on our, 
Well, first of all, I, I think we need to go in to see the initiatives and uh, our efforts to try new things and to see what can be done to improve things. So having somebody that able knows what they're doing and uh, has that spirit of trying out things is very much uh, a high I think this council also. Uh, but I do have to ask you as a good council member, what is the cost of that? How much is this um, trial going to uh, cost the council? Great question. Worship, if I can take the word trial out of that versus I have a budget amount for this uh, patchy, not this technique, but for where road to be passed, there was a 50,000 budget set aside just for that. Um, so I assure you, Council, it's it's in the budget. There's no extra cost. Um, it's just a bit of a di different technique, Your Worship, that I went for. Um, as everybody knows, I have to push the limits a little bit, but uh, or the boundaries. Um, but I fully anticipate this being a successful patch of Weir Road, which I asked Council to to work with me to extend the life of this road for a minimal cost. Well, we're a small uh, township that needs to look for ways of saving in the end, so good on you for doing it. I hope it works out well for us. Um, you also alluded to um, the winter contract out and the hikes in uh, insurance, heights and liability. And Mr. Morrison, you're going to chat with me about our ability to get some tenders for some smaller jobs, uh, uh, grass cutting, for example, and they were limited because uh, a normal tender requires two million dollars insurance coverage, and um, the insurance, the big, the big uh, insurance companies are making it difficult for the small companies to get in terms of prices. And that's why that's going to be. So they're making it difficult for these companies to get insurance to meet that requirement. As a result, we're not getting bids in from the people who need to bid, bid, which means we're. Does that mean we're leaving it to start to do in-house, as it appears the comment here is that we're going to be making sure our new trucks are equipped with plows and sand? So is that the direction these, these insurance, the effect of the insurance rate hikes and that are forcing these calls to start doing their own? Uh, through your worship? Yes, that's the way the uh, private industry is getting enforced. They either cost prohibitive or just can't get the insurance, depending on their their own fleet. Um, and it goes back to it's not property or liability for their own vehicles. And, and if they hit you while they're doing it, it's the liability after they've done the job. And so we're at, we've opened a discussion with the uh, cow, our insurer, on uh, the, the logic of that and uh, the, that responsibility should rest with the township, not with the contractor plowing the township. So the same as if we put a, a blade on the front of our own truck and plow that parking lot out there, then it's our responsibility to know when to call again. If it's freezing rain day, we might have to call our own guys back again. That shouldn't be the contractor's liability to know when to come back again so it's not too slippery. And that's the wrinkle we're trying to get around. I have seen a solution, another, and um, one insurance company that will insure the small guys, but they insist that they have a special contract that says all that liability resides with us. So unless I'm willing to sign the contract that the liability of a slip and fall in my own parking lot resides with me, he won't plow us. So that might be a way around it. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned. Insurance is already climbing. A lot of our peers are experiencing significant insurance rate increases this year. Um, we're talking about this one and other issues with Cowan and we'll bring back up. Once we resolve something, uh, an update and, and some more numbers yeah. and budget implications. Yeah, because um, it, again, it's out of not knowing all of the process of information needed, but it concerns me that essentially, uh, unless we can find another solution, the municipality has to take on more and more of doing work that it was uh, in our interest in terms of financial and personal resources to tender to someone else. And I'm kind of concerned that 
it's saying you're going to have to turn to the nose for a lot more. So uh, I guess it's a matter of stay tuned because uh, this is not just affecting us. It's something uh, we have image colleagues are facing also. Uh, last comment, uh, and that was you mentioned this, our spike and a couple of times, the fact that we're shooting them around. Uh, are we getting any indication of uh, speeding? And I'm going to attach a question to that. I have to be coming down Merwin Lane uh, this afternoon, and I have to know which other lane was it. Um, Blue Church, I believe it is. And uh, there are burnout marks on our pavement about just in Merwin Lane. Somebody the burnout is when we crank your accelerator hot enough that you spin the tires. And you use, they're leaving huge black marks, so these are powerful cars, right? Somebody's doing at least 50 feet of burnout. So are we getting any feedback on that? Are we getting complaints? Uh, the burnouts are from when Ray called me and asked me to be in his office. Oh. And I jumped out <laughs> there. I'm sorry. Where's my well, shoulder? I'm sorry. Where's my, I, I, all I can, I, if I can give counsel a broad overview, you asked me if there's a problem with speeding. Um, uh, I, I don't think I'm prepared to answer that fully, except um, there's been, it's indicative of some of our roles that we monitor that yes, there are, are some problems. And with speeding comes liability, with speeding becomes safety, children at play, people walking in rural Augusta. So it's a very kind of a safe, way to say I'm going to take some more time to answer that question fully and bring a report to council accordingly if that's fair the burnout marks uh your worship that I, I would say that's a one or two off from someone likely younger yeah I, I don't know what to tell you well, there's two two observations one is that we were aware of some going happening a little more north and the uh, because of resident complaints the open and I'm going back six months ago OPP were called in and they did regular monitoring. They actually observed they're helped out by residents complaining because they'll send uh, officers out at around the time that this is occurring. Uh, it just struck me that um, I've been on Merwin Lane quite often now because I'd rather um, use Merwin than going through the town of Prescott uh, because of the 40 kilometer. But um, it, uh, it's a speed there. But, um, I, I believe I've seen more more black marks on the early daily, so we're going to have to watch that and maybe bring in the OPP if we can identify a time that it's happening because uh, uh, they're not speeding, they're going from zero to something uh, with the car snaking because it's on both sides of the lane. So you can see the marks. Uh, not a good practice, but you know, they may be doing it at 3 o'clock in the morning and and I'll leave it there and look for the report later. Mr. Morrison, you and I may have to raise this up to the services board to see if we get the point Okay, so. Are you working next time? Can I just ask a question? I didn't think this. Um, Brad, if we're doing our in house plowing and stuff like that, are we going to have to hire more employees? Do we have enough? Like, what's that? Like, where does that stand? Your Worship. Great question, uh, Council Bowman. No, uh, we have we don't have to hire anybody else. So, okay. uh, thank you. Great points. Uh, it's another win for me uh, or us. No extra staff for needed, Council. Nor overtime. I don't suspect any any more cost to us other than with the purchase of our truck, which again was budgeted this year. So, I think again I'll say, yeah, great point, Council Bowman. I think we're in great shape, both sides. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Unless Council wants to. I think it's something we monitor because if it extends to more and more contracts, then it's going to alter the relationship we have, and it certainly means that there could be an impact on resources or over time. Anyway, we'll monitor it, and thank you for your report. I'm going to turn to uh, Marky Bowman. Do you have anything that you uh, have on the your official report? I do, Your Worship. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I do have a report and uh, we'll uh, discuss that more when I get there, but just a couple of things I want to uh, talk about within the last two weeks since last meeting. <clears throat> Number one, last week was carbon monoxide week and I want to really thank um, Ashley Tricky, our admin and uh, our fire prevention officer, Rob Bushfield. They ran a whole bunch of series on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter on carbon monoxide and they, 
the safety hazards of carbon dioxide and what do you do? Um, and we also did a, uh, some quizzes and gave out uh, five combination smoke alarms to people that uh, got the quizzes correct after the draw. So it went over really well and I think we got a lot of good education done there. Um, the other thing is I'm sure, you know, all of council is aware um, COVID uh, is uh, increasing, the number of cases are increasing, but more importantly, um, the case positivity rate is increasing quite a bit. In uh, June, July, it was like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Um, and as of, I think, yesterday, the daily one was 4.5. In the spring, it was uh, six and a half, seven. So it's raising. I've got graphs that I can show council, but the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, in the spring, we decided we, we shut the fire stations down to even firefighters except for emergency response. I don't want to get there, but uh, one of my main, my job through this is try to protect the fire department so we can protect the residents. So one of the things I instituted today was actually um, uh, occupant loads for each room. So as we know, you just have to have two meters per, per person in each, each, you know, in an indoor area. We actually went around today at station one, tomorrow will be station two, and each room has an occupant load now, even offices. Um, just as a reminder, it's on the door for firefighters that they know there's two people in there or three people in there, I don't go in. All in an effort to try to protect our firefighters so that although, you know, COVID, uh, you know, there's, you know, a good chance that, uh, you know, it's not going to be extremely bad with the people in the fire department. Um, you know, we couldn't, you know, get along as a, we wouldn't be able to respond and maintain our response capability should, you know, we get uh, even 10 or 15 firefighters sick. So um, even if it's only for, you know, a week, week and a half. So anyway, just, we put those proactive things in there. It's really, the public's not going to see anything. It's just never to protect our firefighters. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm pleased to hear that because uh, I'm sure that uh, right from the beginning of COVID, the first thing was to protect our essential services, absolutely. So just another exercise we take care of this very good. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Mr. Morrison, um, do you have any comment, anything ongoing with regard to the food service of the board? Sure, Your Worship. Um, no, other than the report, we are passing the um, traffic logics data on to the OPP directly on a weekly basis now so that they can respond anytime they see a, a, a blip on a particular road, they can respond the next week as opposed to wait until the next meeting. No license plates or anything like that go with it? Just yeah, no, no license plates, no pictures, no. Just, just the time, actually, it's mainly just the time of day. No, sure. <laughs> just in case it changed since I've been gone. <laughs> Close <laughs> <laughs> in the paper, will you? I think we then move to the uh, May uh, COVID 19. And uh, I don't know if it's even important, but I'd like you to comment on uh, uh, the approach we had from uh, North Augusta for um, some kind of a remembrance day uh, event on Wednesday. So maybe you could just um, advise staff of what our council here would like to know. <laughs> Um, so similar to the Labor Day uh, festival out there, they were concerned of how they might proceed with a Remembrance Day event after the Legion had given direction on uh, not having them in the past. I think where they are as of today is uh, trying to follow the basic guidelines that they are Legion set down, bring wreaths in advance or anything people want to put at the cenotaph in advance. There will be a, a short, a brief uh, ceremony where they'll uh, do the basics a uh, moment of in memoriam, quick prayers, God save the Queen, uh, O Canada. Those will probably be a, a very short uh, event. Uh, the, typically in North Augusta, they have a church session before. I think it starts at 10 and then they leave from the church and go down to a large group of people. That will not be occurring this year. And the gathering at the uh, fire hall after the fellowship gathering will not occur. So they're expecting uh, limited numbers and 
thinking that if, given that and given the layout of the uh, terrain up there, they won't have a difficulty with the social distancing. I think we will uh, attend in small numbers from Council's uh, welcome to attend. We all will attend and just uh, confirm or uh, advise people about social distancing if we see an issue. Um, I think that's uh, we uh, had a similar one. I was referring to the mayor. The uh, village of Toledo has one always on the Sunday before Remembrance Day. <coughs> usually between 150 or 200 people at it, but they have a, a huge um, four corners to work with where you can stand out in the middle of the street. But that, that said, they also have the Legion and the Legion said we're not having the formalities of the past. So there was closer to 30 people instead of the 150 this year. They went through a very similar, very brief um, ceremony. The wreaths had been pre-laid. I think they were happy that the uh, formalities still occurred, but still honored the uh, Legion's direction. <coughs> so ho hopefully we can accomplish the same in North Augusta. Okay, I I'll just mention that uh, at the last COVID, uh, sorry, the last NAIC meeting, um, and uh, it's for members of that committee uh, essentially to discuss issues and make a recommendation in, in, uh, in which Mayor gets the last decision. And uh, we, there had been kind of a consensus that we wouldn't do anything uh, in, in respect of essentially the lead that they, the Legion had been providing, that they would put the um, uh, leaves in advance. Uh, but uh, there is a, there's a very strong feeling in, in many communities, I imagine it's really widespread. Uh, to want to approve it. So when I heard the request uh, from Mr. Tennant um, at North Augusta, um, it's, it struck me that uh, the two things I asked was that they, the organizers respect anything that we need to have uh, and that we respect mask and social distancing. I mean, I plan to attend and um, so, but I just think that um, when you're asking people to do a lot of things to uh, essentially stop the spread and they're doing it, I think there's got to be some recognition that that lets us uh, operate at a, at, a, at a slightly different level. In a way, it's, it's our own interpretation of what the province is putting up with its color zones. I think we're doing um, uh, at a level that's sufficient that I think uh, everybody taking care of the way I know they will out there. That it was something that uh, I thought I was receiving. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you're out there, uh, I'll see you. And uh, I, I said to a couple of people, if you uh, know that you will not respect and ask for certain businesses on behalf of the municipality, please speak up. So, okay, because we're putting ourselves a little bit on the line here. But I, I think we're doing the day and that. What time is it? Do we have time? We will find out. Well, the ceremony is always uh, just a few minutes before 11. So. All right, I think we'll uh, move on now with the uh, formal report. Uh, first up is the report 2021-12 recreation of city report. I have a motion for that. It's, um, it's a motion made, or, sorry, moved by uh, Council Henry, seconded by Deputy Mayor Shaver. The motion is due to all the council receive the recreation activity report as prepared. Uh, by the Community Development and Recreation Coordinator dated November 9, 2024, information. And for information, uh, but by a lot of information. So I'll uh, ask anybody if there's any comments uh, or questions uh, that I think will have to be directed to Mr. Morris. Does anybody have any questions? You know, it was very difficult, mm -hmm. lots of information. Okay. I'm good. And this line is here at 150 that we have made. Uh, when I was reading the report, I, I, I highlighted some things that really pleased me. One was that uh, the notation that people in our area are being very respectful of the rules and happy to have the market available to them and make them. And it's directly that that's the same thing as the request being made for the 
Uh, our weekly vendors are increasing, and I'm pleased to see that. Um, there was a joint recreation meeting. I recall there being discussions on need for more improved play structures, um, both adult and youth, um, so that we have the accessibility for play options. Uh, and even there was a talk about having an overall plan that would look to uh, put facilities in different parts of the community so that each area can, can get noted for a certain thing. But it just goes to show the extent that uh, our community development coordinator and our chair here, uh, Councilor Henry, uh, and others, uh, Councilor Bowman, we're really bringing this whole thing together of community development, whether it's recreation, the full breadth of it. And, uh, so very pleased to see that. And there's a notation that North Augusta has purchased a new rink uh, that we put behind the town uh, hall as a great addition to our um, to our township. And then a notation that the committee that uh, Councillor Henry will operate with is um, very passionate about the inclusion, of diversity, multiculturalism, uh, racism, the whole the whole gamut. Um, I will tell you there's a slight problem. In that the day that uh, has been chosen for the community development uh, coordinate, uh, committee meeting I had it coincide with uh, the meeting of the corridor, the um, St. Lawrence Economic and Development Commission um, that's been taking place for a lot of time. So I've got through you or through Nicole, maybe, maybe you could look at it. I doubt if you can change that time. The third thing is, uh, as I say, it's any time that they have been meeting uh, over the past. So I look forward because there's an upcoming meeting which I will not be able to attend and I, I, I do want to be uh, I do want to attend meeting already this one because of that uh, match. So if we can get that resolved before uh, the date we create. Okay, so uh, I have the motion and it's for information. Does anybody have any comment? I'll call the question. I'll hear the motion. Very thank you. We move on to report 2021 13 volunteer appreciation day event. The motion is moved by Council Chapter Home and seconded by Council Bowman. It reads We uh, read resolve that Council authorized staff to proceed with preparations for a volunteer appreciation day as outlined in report 2021 13, and the Council authorized an expenditure support uh, an upside limit of $2,500. Uh, that Council choose December 5th as the day. So we you have in the package the explanation of what I do is there. Uh, does that make any comments? No, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, call the question. I'll favor the motion. Motion carried. So we're moving on to report 2020, which is uh, number 114, which is the The motion is made by Councilor Bowman, seconded by Councilor Chapel Bowman. Motion reads, be it resolved that Council receive, review, uh, and approve the payment of the account payable invoice to on checks 25797 to the 25845 and online payment through the November 5th, 2020, in the amount of $176,018.17. Any discussion? This is a normal one. But, uh, we hope that if there's any questions or comments, they're delivered to Mr. Morrison before the meeting. So I'll call the question on favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Thank you. And then on to the Public Services Report 2020-115 Fire Department Activity Report. It is uh, moved by Councilor Chapel Bowman, seconded by Councilor Bowman. The motion reads to resolve the council receive this report for information on the activities of fire, uh, Augusta Fire Rescue for the month of September and October, and uh, an update on COVID 19 response pertaining to Augusta Fire Rescue. Uh, do you wish to supplement that, Mr. Bowman? Yes, Your Worship, just a, a couple of things. So uh, you'll see it in training, we, we're starting to get extremely more active in training. Um, six firefighters attended a 16 hour CBR course, and uh, we also had multiple firefighters from throughout the counties. So, again, you know, what our, our new facility offices is, offers us is to be able to host these um, trainings here as our firefighters have to travel for them. 
and it gives an opportunity to uh, you know the county's firefighters to attend as well. And uh, we're also doing that in November this month and next month with a, another CPR and first aid refresher and an air break course um, for firefighters to get their uh, air break endorsement. Um, you'll notice in our responses that uh, in, it was a, it was kind of slow the last couple of months, knock on wood. Um, but uh, the ones we did have were, you know, we had multiple accidents, uh, motor vehicle fires, we had a structure fire. So although the calls weren't high volume, we had some um, high profile calls, I guess you, you could call them. Um, and as far as COVID-19, um, you know, the biggest part, it's just pretty much steady as you go. I did give council a little bit of an update on what we did today. Um, the other thing is I'd like to let council know that your fire department has enough PPE now um, to last approximately the next two to four months, depending on, uh, you know, the rate of use. Um, one of the things that's given, given me the, the confidence to say that is that we did receive, you'll notice in the costs for uh, fire department, and this is also some township costs as well, um, have gone up, I believe about $2,500. That was because we're unable to get N95 masks, but I was able to procure some cartridges that go on our SCBA mask filters so that if we get to that point, we can use those. So uh, that's the increase in the cost for, for COVID cost to put us in about $12,000. So other than that, if council has any questions. Thank you, council. Any questions? All right, thank you for your report. Um, and the motion, I think thank you, John. Yeah, so, uh, Al is new and unfinished business. Does anybody have any new and unfinished business that they wish to marry that council? None. I then go to M, which is notice of motion. Does anybody have a notice of motion? Your Worship. Yes. Um, could I just put for discussion that we could possibly fund the EEC program? Is that something that council would be willing to look at, or should that be for a different meeting? Uh, give me the acronym again. EEC. The EEC program, the delegation that we have tonight, is there some sort of funding that we would be willing to work with them? Or? We, you want to speak to it, Mr. Larson? Yeah, let's go through a little bit of history. Uh, I don't think it's all. Give one seat direction from the council on it. So we have a donation where we um, contribute to other activities, great attention bring that up in the annual budget process. But um, I might refer back to you, Mr. Mayor. On yeah, Heather called me, as I said, to alluded to during my conversation and comments to her at the beginning. Called me about six weeks ago, it may have been the time goes so fast here. Uh, but essentially identifying herself in the Columbus Education Center and uh, talking about a program where they're essentially training youth. Uh, and their partnership with the Habitat for Humanity means that they're going to essentially supply the students that will help build the uh, buildings uh, so that they'll be applying the trades and lessons that they're learning um, and, um, uh, and have a home for a family. Um, and so the approach was that we have a property that we would, uh, that is owned by the municipality, that we would provide um, habitat for humanity for that purpose. Um, and so uh, I believe it was mentioned, but uh, I asked Mr. Morrison and Mr. Boulay to look into that. And uh, my understanding is that Myron identified, and I'm get, if I'm wrong, I'm not correct, I believe it was three problems. Uh, and there was one in her production in which uh, she mentioned it was sold, and so that option became not possible. Uh, but we are actively working so that the, uh, the look is to be able to provide them with land that belongs to the country. So in terms of a grant that would go with it, well, if they approach us, I think uh, that's something we can take into account and consider. But at this point in time, there hasn't been any mention of looking at the time. I know that when we were there visiting, when I first met Heather about two weeks ago, she had mentioned just looking for funding for the kids to get tools, and oh. there was lack of funding for work boots, gloves, 
food, yep. snacks, Perfect. Yep. especially during COVID, there are a lot of uh, low income. So, uh, yeah, do I, I see some activity over here. Do you want to comment on this? Uh, no, just to confirm that uh, my, uh, Mr. Relay did provide three alternatives and has been uh, working with uh, Habitat for Humanity since. Um, Mr. Thig just suggested one property that we acquired through tax sale. It's too small for a regular house um, and because of setbacks, but perhaps the tiny house, uh, smaller um, septic requirements as a result. Yeah. yeah, there might be something there, but we have, we can look into that. Yeah. There's a great push at counties to increase the affordable housing stock in the region. And it's uh, something that we're looking at in the community and through uh, our town of Lyman Valley and uh, Nicole has some involvement in that. Um, personally, if we can find a few properties for here to have that community, I think uh, council might be persuaded to go along. So, but uh, we'll bring that as options become available to us. Right now, we're looking for what? As far as I can. Uh, Another, I have to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Anyway. No. Well, ask me a question. Go ahead. I just, no, just you like what Tammy mentioned that, I, I'm just getting caught up on this and I talked to Tammy just a little bit about it, but I know you mentioned like they're looking for tools and stuff, and there's always, um, you go to garage sales, you get, and I'm just putting out there if there's not extra money, possibly trying to put something out to their community saying there's, I'm sure I could go through my husband's shed and get rid of a whole pile of <laughs> ten times the same thing. He's not gonna be happy about it, him, but and no way to get them back. <laughs> yeah. He, I, mean, I just usually try to toss him when he's out yeah, looking yeah. into the metal pile. No, but I'm just other ways maybe that we could and I'd be more than willing to help. Looking if there's people that have there's people that have all kinds of tools that I'm sure and still in good enough condition and that would be useful. That's a little bit right. Maybe we could do something together and be more than willing to help. Well, and, and to your point also, just remind all members of council that everything that's done in the committee is by motion. So if you get a suggestion from uh, someone out, outside that uh, has an idea that council might support, then encourage them to get it into a motion and you, the council, can bring it. And when I call for those the motions. You can add that if you're looking, going to look for a motion that would uh, look to what we can do uh, to assist in the, the tools. Um, the more specific you can be, the easier it is to vote on. But uh, still, we can go with a general one along the lines of what Council Shaka Homer is suggesting. But um, for us to to really discuss it and accomplish it, we're using the motion that then can get supported and sets policy for the, uh, the council. Any further discussion on that thing? Okay, uh, so if there's no more, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sorry. Just, you asked me if I had a yes, yes. question about it. So to go off of Councillor Henry, I, I can assure you, Councillor, uh, uh, to speak on behalf of Councillor Henry, which uh, any financial contributions to this group would be greatly appreciated. And, and I, I and I think uh, your direction to bring a motion forward on paper with a little more detail is great. Yeah. Um, I think that's where Councillor Henry's going. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, any financial and what I think this will do, Mayor, Your Worship, on behalf of Council, I think once we start rolling, if Augusta starts rolling the ball, I believe it's going to be a train and everybody's going to want to hop on on it from a municipality point of view. And there's some big private organizations coming forth. And I'd like to see Augusta lead that because that's who we are, in my opinion, as forward thinkers and a strong, the little township with the big engine. Yeah, I agree with the point of view, um, and I'm not trying to, there's no buts here at all. Uh, when uh, motions are looked at by auditors, they have to be supported by things. That, I mean, essentially, we're spending our taxpayers, our residents' money, and uh, if we have good justification, explanation, that makes our job a lot easier. So uh, I think we're going in the right direction here. Just a reminder that we've got to make sure we're dotting I's and crossing the T's. So those T's. Uh, um, if there's no further on discussion on notes of motion, I go to end bylaws, and there are none. I'm waiting for an echo from my clerk. Uh, anybody have any announcements that they wish to make? Any activities you're aware of? 
None. I'm going to move the P. Question period is from the press. Mr. Lowry, you're present. Do we have uh, anyone else that we're aware of on the press? Uh, sir, Russia, we do have two public members online. Okay. Do you want to ask them? Well, I'll go with that. Do we have any questions uh, from the public? If you can, identify yourself and um, pose your question. If there's any. Uh, Michelle and Doug, we we're just wondering if you're still tuned in. If so, did you want to ask a, a question or say anything? Hi, this is Michelle. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, I have no questions. I uh, though I've been keenly listening to the uh, the youth uh, opportunity and the various ways that I think Maitland Tower could collaborate with the township and with that organization. So I uh, I look forward to further conversation about it. That's great. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay. I think we have we can slow here so that the time is on moving the mic. Um, then we have R, which is a hard law to confirm the proceedings of council. I have it here. It was moved by Councilor Chapel Holmes, seconded by Councilor Bowman. And to me, we resolve that by law number 3497 2020, confirm the proceedings of council for township to conduct that is being held on November 9th, 2020. We read the first time. Second time, third time, and being active in the day. Is there any discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion. And the motion is carried. And that brings us to the adjournment one. It is moved by Councilor Chapel Holmes, seconded by Councilor Bowen. We resolve that this meeting uh, do now adjourn at 7.53 until November 23rd, 2020, at 30 p.m. at the call of the Mayor's Budget Committee. All in favor? Right. And we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Oh, no. 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 Good night. Good night, folks. We're signing off now. Thanks for joining us. Good night.